Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about creating our own machine learning algorithm. And it's going to be super simple, super fun. So let's just get into it. Well, when we make this from the ground up, we have three key steps. Key step one is going to be actually getting and acquiring our initial data set. Number two is going through this data set and making sure that is uh, it can actually go in to our neural network. Third, making sure that we can architect it and then train it, okay? Okay, so if I were to create my own data set, I would definitely use Chrome. Chrome has a lot of extensions that can help you um, a lot, right? So for example, this double click image downloader can help you select images very quickly within a web page and you can choose the very high quality photos that you want, right? Then you also have this image downloader where you can just download all the images on a page. Um, and then you also have this copy fish where you can go into any image and take the text out of it. Now, why would you want high quality photos instead of just taking all the images? Well, if you have a task, right? And you know that you're only going to take photos or categorize, for example, porcupines. Um, porcupines from the very front view. Well, porcupines from the very front view should be the only thing going into your training data, right? It shouldn't be from the side, from behind, with three of them. No, you want one and only the front facing one. Second of all, you might also want to go and just download your data from a larger data set. So AWS Marketplace with all their free data is really interesting. A lot of this stuff might really help you. There are a lot of different data sets that you might want to look into like IMDB, um, automotive supply chain data. Let's just say that we have our data, right? Well, now we have to actually use MATLAB to deploy this. Essentially what I would recommend to do is imagine you have all these images of porcupines in this uh, folder right here. And what you would do is you'd go in and make sure that you find all the fold, all the files that have the end.jpg. You would resize it to something um, reasonable, right? So 200, 200. After you resize all your images, you make sure that they have the .jpg, all that stuff. You're gonna go in here. Okay, and we're going to follow essentially what MATLAB has given us. We have five very important layers. The image input layer, the convolutional 2D layer, the batch normalization layer, and also the ReLU layer. But last but not least, the classification layer. So the convolutional 2D layer is essentially a filter. We'd get to define its size and the number of them. And these will hopefully find features within our image that our neural network can pick up and start using to better define what is a porcupine versus what is a hedgehog. And then we have batch normalization, which I'm going to basically hand wave over because I know very little about it. But after that, we have our activation function. And our activation function, what it does is it essentially encodes how much of a probability before a neuron or a uh, yeah a hidden neuron is going to fire or give out its output right so that is why there is several different types of these rectified linear unit or the relu there's this hyperbolic tan h so based on your activation function you might end up with a lot better accuracy when it comes to categorization now we also have the number of fully connected layers you'd like to do Usually adding more makes it better. Uh, doing less obviously makes it worse. Uh, we're gonna add some soft masks, activation layer. This is always important. And then the classification layer, making sure that it all boils down to two classifications that uh, we would like, or at least the classifications in this category, okay? After we do all that, we're going to adjust our initial learning rate, our max number of epochs, so the number of epochs is going to be how often or how long it's going to learn. Neural net. It's a function that tries to find a local minimum or a minimum in general. So this learning rate, if too big, could overstep the local minimum. So sometimes you want to keep it very low, but 
it's going to be very slow. If you make it very high, it might leave you dry. Here's some data that you might want to look at. If you're thinking of changing some of our initial parameters and how that will affect your accuracy, time of training, all that stuff. But please, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It means a lot uh, so that I can keep on coming out with videos just like this. Thank you. Bye.